In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. And peace be upon God's apostles, messengers, and prophets. Muslims, many Christians would be surprised to learn, make no distinction as to the prophetic capacity and divine mission of all prophets and messengers. And yet, one of the most revered prophets and routinely cited angelic men is Jesus of Nazareth. In the Holy Quran, he is mentioned by name in multiple chapters. Islamic scripture instructs us to quote, believe in him. Then, incredibly, God declares, I will make those who follow you superior to those who reject faith until the day of resurrection. God says to Jesus, we raised high the esteem in which you are held. The magnanimity of his character is recognized time and again throughout the Quran. Called, quote, a witness, God's messenger, a righteous apostle, God's word, his spirit, the Messiah, a sign of God, and numerous other epithets of honor spread over 15 chapters of the Quran. He is, quote, honored in this world and the next, and of those who are granted nearness to God. Jesus is, quote, supported with the Holy Spirit and was a miracle worker by God's command. But one of his greatest miracles, found exclusively in the Quran, was speaking eloquent words of wisdom and exhortation as he lay in his crib. قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابِ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا He said, Indeed, I am the servant of God. He has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. By speaking in the crib, God eviscerated the allegations of the monks forever and established the lofty status of this child until the end of time. Imam Ali the Prophet Muhammad's son-in-law and appointed successor. He provides this description of Jesus. He says, If you desire, I will tell you about Jesus, the son of Mary. He used a stone for his pillow, put on coarse clothes and ate rough food. His condiment was hunger. His lamp at night was the moon. His shade during the winter was just the expanse of earth, eastward and westward. His fruits and flowers were only what grows from the earth for the cattle. He had no wife to allure him, nor any son to give him grief, nor wealth to deviate his attention, nor greed to disgrace him. His two feet were his conveyance, and his two hands, his servant. Another beautiful description is by Jesus himself, but this time as quoted by the eighth Imam, Ali ibn Musa Rida. My food, Jesus is quoted to have said, is what grows from the soil for livestock. My drink is what can fill my hand from river water. My lantern is the moon. My bed is the sand, my pillow is a rock, my clothes are from animal hair. I have no son who dies, nor a woman who is saddened, nor a house that falls apart, nor money that vanishes. I am the richest man, Jesus said, among the children of Adam. As highlighted in this brief yet incredible description, the most unmistakable feature of Jesus was his asceticism and utmost disregard for pomposity or transient pleasures of this world. Being detached from material thrills brought Jesus as close a leader can get to his flock, a key requirement of a true champion of the oppressed. And if he departed this world from the door of the corporeal, he re-entered the realm of humankind through the hearts of countless men and women. It is no wonder then that the vast majority of people around the globe today set their annual calendars according to his birthday. It is no wonder that Jesus is loved and cherished 
by just over half the world's population, including Muslims of all denominations. Such is the irony of life on earth that living in extreme simplicity, free from indulgence, turns this persecuted Middle Eastern fatherless carpenter into the definition of vivacity and one of the most recognized names in the entire world. In addition to our shared belief in God, Jesus is the greatest and most promising common bond between Islam and Christianity. It may surprise many Christians that despite the many doctrinal differences, the one creator, Jesus and his mother Mary, are areas of significant overlap which must be given their due attention. Yet, let me say this, by far one of the greatest distinguishing features of Jesus that we share with Christians is his second coming. In a dramatic series of events, he will return to earth alongside the Mahdi, the final savior, who is actually a blood relative of Christ. The Islamic Messiah's mother is a Roman princess and a descendant of the apostle Peter, Jesus' first cousin and appointed heir. His father is the 11th Shia Imam and direct descendant of godly prophets and messengers. Now this isn't an accident of birth, but a calculated divine plan to create a global identity for a universal mission of cosmic proportions. The two Abrahamic bloodlines of Isaac and Ishmael, Jesus and Muhammad are meeting for the very first time in history, producing the total sum of divine manifestation and the epitome of celestial justice. To that end, the Mahdi isn't aiming to replace the Judeo-Christian Messiah. He's not here to replace Jesus. He will be accompanied by Jesus, who plays a pivotal role in his messianic assignment. Most notably, Jesus will be an arbiter who brokers a peace treaty between the Mahdi's domain, based in Iraq and encompassing the East, with Christendom, based in the West and led by the Son of Mary himself. The point of this is to know that the world will belong to divine prophets. As God states in the Holy Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ Before this we wrote in the Psalms, God says, after the message, in other words, the Torah which was given to Moses, we have written in those, my righteous slaves shall inherit the earth. Let us pray, my dear brothers and sisters, on this blessed day, that we will be part of that mission. Let us strive to serve God's righteous slaves and help them achieve those divine goals. Let us pray that we live to see the luminous faces of Jesus and the Mahdi praying in unison and holding the flag of virtue, justice, and kindness as they rid the world of oppression and evil once and for all.